Hey, what's up? Uh, I just want to talk uh, about why I quit grad school. A few people had requested this and said that this would be a good topic uh, based on something I said in one of my podcast episodes, I think. Um, but it, anyway, I, I made a video um, before I started grad school about why I was going back to school. Uh, if you like, you can check that out. I'll put that video, uh, a link to that video in the description below. Um, and it, basically, I was I was ready to just take on a new challenge. Uh, it had been a couple of years since I uh, finished my undergraduate degree in philosophy at uh, the University of New Orleans, and I wanted to do a master's. Um, I, I kind of had some like medium to long term plans to teach uh, at least part time to teach like basic level philosophy and critical thinking in uh if not in a university even just like uh maybe convince like a junior college like a community college or something um to like incorporate a little more like raw critical thinking into their curriculum you know and uh maybe even uh trickle that down to like high school you know maybe even elementary schools uh i've i'd been hearing about a few elementary schools that were experimenting with philosophy and critical thinking uh, that, you know, increased their students' standardized test scores, like, exponentially, <laughs> you know, uh, which it, it comes as no surprise to me because, you know, I've been interested in philosophy for a long time, and I know the uh, good that can come out of it. I know the benefits. Um, so, I, I don't know, like, so teaching, I, I mean, I have a lot of hobbies and a lot of things that I would like to turn into a career, but teaching philosophy was definitely one of those things and uh, that I would wanted to do at least on a part-time basis. So I was like, hell, I'll you know go back to, to school, do a master's and take it from there. Maybe go on to do a PhD, maybe stop at a master's, uh, depending on what opportunities present themselves, you know. Um, but, you know, not only that, not only based on that goal, uh, that plan that I had, uh, wasn't the only reason I went back to school, man. You know, I, I had been doing a lot of independent research on my, you know, specific philosophical areas of interests, which, uh, uh, mainly included, um, mainly included philosophy of science, uh, phenomenology, um, meta philosophy, uh, that's studying the nature of philosophy. And, uh, also, um, also, like, I was just interested in, like, kind of shattering boundaries uh, between disciplines, you know, really interested in psychology and uh, had some good ideas about and well, pieces I had written about how um, psychology should be, like, sort of this bridge between philosophy and the hard sciences. Oh, it's raining. Okay. No worries. I have a skylight. Um, so... Anyway, I, you know, I wanted to explore my interests uh, in more depth, and I wanted to, uh, I wanted to, you know, be at least somewhat creative in doing so. You know, somewhat original. I had already done a bachelor degree. Uh, I knew, I, I know how to write a research paper. I know all the, you know, basic logic skills and stuff like that. Like I have the fundamentals down just fine. Uh, so anyway, I, I applied to two schools. Uh, one was Louisiana State University, um, which was pretty near my home. Uh, and that's basically uh, what you would expect out of a big university uh, philosophy department. Um, just basic, you know, taking credits, uh, write a thesis at the end, defend the thesis, that's it. And then uh, there you have it, you have a master's degree and then maybe push you off, they'll try to push you off into a PhD program, you know, to make their department look better. Um, and then I, I applied to the University of Buckingham uh, in, actually, the main campus is in the town of Buckingham in the UK, in England, but uh, my specific program would have been in London. Um, uh, and basically, it's not your typical master's program. It was a one-year program, one-year series of uh, 12 seminars uh, put on by famous uh, philosophers uh, headed by Roger Scruton, if you know him. Um, and basically you just, you listen to the seminar, you have a little Q&A, and then you discuss the ideas in more depth 
uh, over dinner and wine uh, with absolutely no limitations on free speech whatsoever, uh, <laughs> which tended, which tends to be a problem in normal universities because uh, free speech isn't typically welcome, right? But uh, I, I actually wasn't... So anyway, uh, long story short, I decided to stay close to home and go to LSU. Um, blew off the, the Buckingham thing, um, which I ended up regretting later, and I'll do another video on that probably. Um, but stayed close to home, went to LSU, and I, I wasn't really, I wasn't all that concerned about the, the whole political correctness and free speech thing uh, going into my program, although I know it's a big problem in universities in North America. I, I didn't think much of it for philosophy because I kind of like naively thought, well, yeah, it's a problem in the other humanities and in the social sciences, right? But not in philosophy, right? I mean, that's where you go to have your views challenged and you go to challenge other people's views and you have open debate about things, right? I, I just took it for granted because I, I had some really good discussions in my undergrad experience and I, I thought that it would have been more of the same um, and much more of the same in philosophy seminars on the graduate level. Uh, turns out I was wrong. <laughs> And, and that actually became the main reason that I quit. Uh, um, so I, I guess like in, in one of my philosophy seminars that I took, it was on uh, scientific knowledge. It was an epistemology course, epistemology being the branch of philosophy that deals with uh, knowledge. How do we know what we know, right? Um, very broad topic, obviously. Uh, and so... I, since philosophy of science was one of my main interests, I was like, okay, great, man. Epistemology course and scientific knowledge, that's great. Uh, for my first semester, we'll see how that goes. And so um, I was pretty excited about it. Uh, started to do the readings. Wasn't too impressed with the readings, to be honest, but I had fun picking them apart uh, while I was reading them and taking all kinds of notes on them. And, uh, and I actually volunteered to uh, lead the first discussion of all the students and I did an awesome job, um, I thought, and everyone else thought. My professor commended me, uh, complimented me many times um, afterward about how high I set the bar, about how well I understood the material and articulated it to the class, and uh, how I had lots of good questions to follow up with um, after uh, explaining certain concepts and stuff, and how I, I did a good job of like flowing the discussion. and. Uh, even one of the the students said much of the same. One of the students even said, uh, "Man, I had like kind of an, an inferiority complex uh, now. Like I don't know what I'm going to do, man. <laughs> you know." But uh, so any, anyway, um, it started off well, and I was doing really well in my other courses too, which I ended up with A's in. Um, but this course got more and more and more analytical uh, as as the semester went on, and less and less open. Um, to like the free expression of ideas, I guess you could say, you know, um, we read really only a small handful of essays that, uh, I found to be, um, interesting, uh, remotely true, um, relevant in today's context. Um, and I, I kind of prepared myself for that. I mean, I don't mind taking, you know, uh, taking, you know, negative notes, I guess, um, for the sake of like keeping the discussion interesting. But, you know, once we got into the seminar room, it seems like every time the discussion really started to open up, which took a long time, by the way, because it was like always really awkward to start, you know, it took like, it was a three hour seminar once a week. And it took about two and a half hours for everyone to start to like, feel comfortable to speak their mind about some of these things and start to debate, you know, uh, which I thought was you know, I wasn't surprised by it, but I was a little disappointed by it that I was one of the more assertive uh, uh, people in that seminar room. Um, but um, any anyway, so yeah, every time uh, we really started to open up and have a good discussion that seemed uh, to put these ideas from these pieces into uh, like a relevant um, context uh, for today, uh, you know, a pragmatic uh, context. Um, it's like my, my professor, who, by the way, identified as a radical left-wing uh, person, 
um, he he sort of acted as the language police. You know, he he like started to wrangle us back up. He was like, "Oh no, guys, hold on, we're we're getting a little too far off topic. Let's let's go back to the piece. Go back to breaking down the technicalities of the piece." And I'm like, "Yeah, but no, I mean, that's not what I wanted to get out of these discussions. You know, because." Um, First of all, it's not the technicalities that matter. We all have a good background in logic from our undergrad, like, or else we wouldn't have gotten accepted to this grad program, right? Um, we, we know how to write research papers. We know how to break down a piece, technically speaking. What we should be interested in, what I'm interested in, is the content, is the meaning, is where is this going, why does this matter, or why does it not matter, you know? And... Um, Every time we got into that discussion, he kind of wrangled us back up. He was like, hey, let's not let's not venture uh, too far away from the piece. It's like, no, but if the piece is any good, it's going to allow for this type of discussion. And if we have a good open discussion, if you've ever had, you know, an, uh, a good, like, eye-opening intellectual discussion where you actually learn something, uh, you usually circle back to the some of the main original points anyway, you know, so it ends up being, even from a technical standpoint, relevant uh, to um, to the essay or whatever. So anyway, that went on for, you know, the second half of the semester, roughly speaking, uh, maybe even a little longer than that, maybe started before midterms. But um, I, I just looked at that and I, I thought that, man, if this is just going to be a bunch of technical um, jargon uh, at the expense of the content itself, which is what should matter, you know, then this isn't a game I want to play. It's, it's not a place to learn. It's not a place to better your own way of thinking uh, and to um, have open discussion and better uh, help other people better their ways of thinking as well. And it's not, it's not a place to learn things, you know, and so I just, you know, going into my, my midterm, uh, going into my midterms, I, I already kind of sensed that it was going downhill and that um, it was going to be an unfulfilling two years if I continued. Um, that uh, also, even, you know, those little hints of political correctness, as subtle as they may have been in my, my department, um, it was enough for me to decide, well, like, I'm wasting my time and my money by being here, and uh, I think I'm going to find something else to do for a while and, uh, and maybe even reapply to the University of Buckingham because I know that uh, they're known as being uh, one of the least politi politically correct schools in the world. And uh, one thing that you, the University of Buckingham does is um, they teach kind of a real world business model alongside every program at their school, regardless of what your major is. And it shows you how to put your um, your areas of interest into like real world contexts and make something of it, which is why they, uh, they've been rated um, first, they've been ranked first in uh, student satisfaction, in uh, quality teaching, and in job placement, um, postgraduate job placement for the last few years in the UK. Uh, so, actually, to make a long story short on that front, I did reapply to the University of Buckingham. Uh, I got in uh, again, which I was a little surprised about being that um, this is only the third year they're doing that program that Roger Scruton is going to be uh, directing it and it's gotten a lot more popular and a lot more selective and uh, I just I had my doubts about whether or not my credentials would stack up against the competition uh, for a second year you know so I kind of I was having some feelings of regret about not going the first time and I uh, felt like I kind of blew my opportunity, you know, but this is uh, this is a second chance, man. So it uh, looks like I'm going to be moving to London uh, and studying under some world famous uh, thinkers. And uh, hopefully it'll be a much better platform for uh, debating um, ideas freely uh, without restriction. And it'll be a place where I can actually learn something because that's what I'm interested in. I'm, I'm interested in genuine intellectual pursuits and, uh, 
you know, if there's one area of my life that I'm not going to sacrifice quality, it's uh, what it's it's the experiences and uh, the the conversations and the the people I surround myself with um, that I can improve, that I can learn from, and uh, you know, base that that I can improve myself in an intellectual and mental you know fashion. Um, so. Anyway, looking forward to that. Still working out all the technicalities, but looks like I'm going to have to get rid of uh, this cool studio apartment in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Not uh, not too sad to leave Baton Rouge, <laughs> but I'll probably be homeless for a few months, maybe do some traveling, and uh, then hopefully I'll be at Buckingham in the fall. But anyway, that's just a little bit about uh, why I quit grad school and... Um, where I'm going next. So, uh, more videos to come about that too, I'm sure. So cheers.